with monasteries across the state holding religious ceremonies and devotees offering prayers to Lord Buddha. The typical Drukpa Chachi celebrations had started to take hold. It felt like a regular state government holiday in our calendar, but it wasn't that usual. All we knew was that the occasion was of utmost importance. The festival falls on the fourth day of the sixth month of the Tibetan lunar calendar, between August and September every year, commemorating the sacred event that reminds every human being about nobility, mankind, and a correct way to lead life. The festival is celebrated with great enthusiasm in numerous parts of the world. Drukpa Cheche honors the auspicious day when Gautam Buddha delivered his first sermon after his enlightenment. In Buddhism, the sermon is also known as the setting of the wheel of dharma in motion. Buddha spelled out the four noble truths that he learned through his enlightenment. This was so that his disciples and followers too can take the path to salvation. Besides religious ceremonies, the locals also host a cultural fest. The Yak race has been a part of the Drukpa Chachi festival, which has been passed on to generations in an effort by the nomadic Drukpas to keep their culture alive. Lhasar Valley at an altitude of 15,500 feet in the extreme north of Sikkim serves as a major host for this festival and so we decided to give it a go. Before reaching the main venue, a detour which took us towards Lhasar, we witnessed this famous Oxbow Lake which meanders beyond the Lhasar Valley. The scenic beauty of the Himalayan range and a picture-perfect wide valley with Oxbow Lake will greet you as you walk your way down. The valley looks normally uninhabitable except for some occasional settlements by nomads for grazing yaks. Promising us the fantastic view of glaciers, clear lakes and rare flora, the trek started from Thangu. We took the three-hour trek with the trail being a gradual constant climb till the ridge line from where one drops down to the Lhasar Valley. The destination we embarked on to witness this festival. The occasion is important for Buddhists as it is a day when Lord Buddha gave his first sermon on the Four Noble Truths in Sarnath. As the tale goes, Buddha, after the Enlightenment, set out to give teachings for the first time and thousands of devotees appeared to hear his preaching. Before the event could start, we wanted to know what an average day at the Lhasar Valley would be like. The nomads or Drukpa, meaning people of the solitudes, frequented high lonely grasslands, unsuitable for settled farming, moving their herds of yak, sheep and goats. They keep themselves busy in the mornings and evenings, grazing the animals, milking and churning to make butter and cheese. They also visit each other's houses for help. The Drukpas rely on the yaks for their sustenance, deriving food and fuel. The preparations began early. The Lachin Pipon, head of Zumsa, accompanied the Lamas who presided over the rituals. It began with the installation of the prayer flags with a belief in Buddhism that whenever the wind blows, the positiveness of these mantras flow in all areas. After decorating the shrine, the Drukpa tradition to carry out the Yakris in open fields of Zashu is set. The yaks, meanwhile, are decorated with colorful scarves and carpets. The herderers sit atop their yaks or pull them towards the finish line to complete the yak race. Also, this year saw six competitors, few of them not even herderers by profession, would choose to be a part of the game just to keep their century-old tradition alive. The winners are congratulated and presented with kadas. Also, games like the tug of war, short put, and weightlifting are a part of the festivity. The games that assess the physical and mental fitness of participants are said to comprehend the challenge it takes to be a drukpa. After the games, people gather for a dance. It is essentially a circle dance, 
the dance embodies moral instruction on compassion and is a type of prayer to invoke blessings and people express their happiness and gratitude for the good things in life. Following which there is a feast, then the happy day of the celebration comes to an end. By the time we realized that the festivity had come to an end, a lot of unpacking had been done. It was also a wake-up call for few of us. The takeaway from the trip was that that this particular generation could possibly be the last one to narrate about the yakres by the Drukpas, also the last ones to witness the tradition kept alive. Or could there be culturally aware youths to take the legacy forward? Who knows?